mind and my mind went straight to some dollar bills right <laughs> either one you've seen in the movie or one you've owned in a bit or some dollars you have stuck in your safe or wherever your wardrobe or whatever hi family welcome back to the channel my name is joycey and this is evolve with joycey thank you so much for clicking today i bring you a book review the book is nine things successful people do differently so if you clicked on this video then you are successful or you're looking to be successful in one way or another i want to tell you that you are on the right channel so stick through even as i break down the nine things successful people do differently stick and see I know that most of us are bored with what motivational speakers have been telling us like do this and do that and some people actually say that they don't tell us exactly what they do to be successful but I want to also put across that success is relative and so what you call successful may not what I call successful but these points after reading this book I find that when one applies it in all areas of their lives they will actually get some results so the first point is that get specific with your goals now if you are going to be honest you and i set goals that are too vague now a quote in that chapter that i love is when what you're striving for is too vague it's too tempting to take the easy way out when you're feeling lazy discouraged or bored now as human beings our natural makeup is to find the easiest way out and once there is no accountability of any sort we are gone so specificity is very important when it comes to setting your goals so if for instance you want to lose weight with all due respect to my people who are trying to lose weight a better goal is i want to lose say 10 pounds by the end of december that is better compared to i want to lose some weight by the end of the year do you get it so please decide to be more specific with your goals from onwards now in that chapter the author talks about a certain strategy called mental contrasting so this strategy involves thinking about how you feel when you have achieved your your goal for instance if you want to buy a mercedes-benz how will you feel by the time you buy a mercedes-benz think about it with all the details and then think about the obstacles that are between you and getting the mercedes-benz and according to the author once you do that it gives you strength to work hard at your goals and be more specific with it point is seize the moment to act on your goals you will agree with me that because of social media and all of this proliferation of the internet and all of that we tend to think that we're busy but we're actually just on our phones so here's how you can seize the moment to act on your goals you can actually state specific places and times that you act on specific goals so for instance say that i'll go to the gym at 6 a.m those very very specific things that you need to do and also use the if then approach so if this happens then i'll do this if it's 12 o'clock i'll work out or something like that so that it will it's all so that you keep yourself in check so that you'll be able to act on your goals. The third point is know exactly how far you have left to go. Now there's this whole, I don't want to say it's an argument, but people say that it's better to look at how far you've come than to look at how far you have left to go. But the problem with looking at how far you've come is that you may get comfortable when you still have a lot to do, even though you've come so far. So this book, advises that you know exactly how far you have left to go and how do you do this by constantly monitoring your progress right you and i don't like monitoring our progress because sometimes it's not nice it's, it's just not beautiful it's not glamorous so what you want to do is to get someone that can help you become accountable or better still if there's nobody coming for you you might you must as well be your own accountability partner so assess yourself as much as possible and depending on how long or short term your goal is you know how often you should be doing monitoring or assessments of yourself the fourth point is to be a realistic optimist i'm not gonna lie that i also struggled a bit with this particular chapter because I felt that it was going against optimistic people so I felt attacked of some sort right but reading through it I realized that there was a point in there to consider so this author is simply saying that there's a difference between believing that you'll be successful 
and believing that you will have success easily and you don't have to deceive yourself that oh it's going to be rosy it's going to be smooth when actually there are going to be some obstacles so you have to be a realistic optimist think about obstacles that will come your way and think about how you would deal with them when they come your way one thing she wrote in this chapter that caught my attention was it's not a negative thing to think about the problems that may come your way when you're trying to be successful at something it is actually foolish to not think so and i thought that was thought provoking Fifth point is focus on getting better rather than being good. Now we're so obsessed with likes on Instagram and follows and all of that. I am not out of this bracket, but we forget to enjoy the process and to actually build certain qualities in us when we're trying to be successful at things. Everybody's stuck on, oh, is he good at this or is she good at that? But we actually forget that when we enjoy the process we can actually make mistakes learn from the mistakes and that in the process makes us better people and better versions of ourselves <laughs> have in mind that abilities are malleable so if there's something that you cannot do now you can learn to be able to do it and it will help you and don't beat yourself too hard like you're free to make mistakes when you stay in your mistakes is a problem but when you make mistakes and you learn from them is the difference and it's a good thing and it makes you become it makes you become better rather than just being good sixth point is one of my favorite chapters it is that have grit grit is simply courage or strength in character or resolve or courage yeah basically never back down in the face of adversity like you must be somebody who is gritty like you don't give up at the side of obstacles or problems or setbacks and she also described two theories in this and i would like to share with you entity theorists actually according to the book um, are people who blame setbacks on lack of ability these people believe that ability is fixed and that once they cannot do something then it just means that they are not good at something and the next kind of people are incremental theorists so incremental theorists are people who believe that they can actually learn and become able at things right so these people blame setbacks on improper planning, lack of thoughts, and all those things. Things that are controllable so that they are able to like plan better next time. But entity theorists are people who just say that, oh, if I was unable to do this, then I just cannot do it and all of that. So I want you to assess yourself. Are you an entity theorist or an incremental theorist? When you are faced with setbacks, what comes to your mind? Do you all of a sudden just give up and say that, oh, it's not my field, I don't know how to do this, or you go like, I can do this if I'm able to do this, and you're able to build characters or learn to become something you are not original. So make that session and come to an honest conclusion of what you really are based on your past experiences and leave it in the comment section and let's have a conversation down there. There's also another point that I'd like to share with us all. She says that you are not going to see improvements if you don't believe that improvements is possible. And that was striking to me because it's just like wealth, right? And I'm working on bringing us the wealth series. That's just by the way. So if you don't believe in improvements or you don't believe that improvements can come into your life or in that area you're trying to get success, it actually will not come and check our lives and our beliefs and change some if necessary. Well, the seventh chapter is build your willpower muscle this is very important for success in any field at all because life is generally literally about just overcoming temptations right and she wrote something in there that caught my attention she said that your willpower muscle is just like the other muscles in your body when it doesn't get much exercise it becomes weaker over time you have to deliberately build your willpower muscle because it's not gonna just come right so you can start by giving up snacks and replacing it with say fruits the eighth chapter or the eighth point is don't tempt fate this is one of the funniest chapters in this book right so it basically says that don't think that you have a strong willpower or so much that you plant yourself in situations that you face temptations right it says that avoid thinking you can have just one or a little of something you enjoy but really shouldn't be having it's much easier but less fun right so 
this chapter basically says that don't be overly confident in your willpower so that you plant yourself in situations where for instance if you've stopping cigarettes right now you don't smoke cigarettes anymore this particular chapter is trying to tell you that don't surround yourself with your friends who smoke cigarettes because when you do that you're tempting fate the strength of willpower varies okay and it's, it's very technical the fact that you're now you don't smoke anymore doesn't mean you should go around people who smoke like you're tempting fate and you shouldn't do that now the last and final point is that focus on what you want to do and not what you will not do now let's do a quick a quick 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 exercise don't think about dollars what just happened your mind and my mind went straight to some dollar bills right <laughs> either one you've seen in the movie or one you've owned in a bit or some dollars you have stuck in your safe or wherever your wardrobe or whatever that is what focus is Esther jno Charles says that what you focus on expands so once you mention something or you try to suppress a thought focus is actually driven to that and that's actually what you will think that is what the theory on thought suppression says it says that once you think about not doing something focus is actually driven to that the research on thought suppression says that trying to avoid a thought makes it even more active in your mind impulse gets strengthened rather than diminished so what you want to do is to focus only on the things that you want to do and not the things that you don't want to now let's quickly 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 go through all the points the first is that get specific with your goals the second is that seize the moment to act on your goals the third is that know exactly how far you have left to go the fourth is that be a realistic optimist the fifth is that focus on getting better rather than being good the sixth is that get grit or have grit the seventh is that build your willpower muscle the eighth is that don't tempt fate and the ninth Point, final point is that focus on what you want to do and not what you want to do thank you so much for watching today's video i know that you have some value please practice these things in your personal life and get the book if you can do i recommend the book absolutely absolutely recommend it it is only 106 pages and you can finish it in a day now leave all the comments in the section and if you watch until this part of the video you probably like my kind of content so please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the little bell beside the subscribe button so that you get notified every time i post a video until my next video this is joycey and evolve and to my next video, my name is Joycey and this is Evolve with Joycey. Um, as always, love and see you in my next one. Bye.